it's time for the GT68 smartwatch full walkthrough. And if you haven't seen my previous video, uh, the GT68 smartwatch, is it any good? Please take a look at it first. Before we st start talking about the uh, apps that are included with the device, we're going to talk about how to connect it to your phone using some commonly available Google Play Store apps instead of the manufacturer's recommended app. One of them is going to be Bluetooth Auto Connect. Basically, every time Bluetooth is turned on the phone, it will try to connect to the watch. And every time the screen is turned on, the phone will try to connect to the watch. And any time that it is plugged into the charger, it will try to connect to the watch. A Bluetooth Auto Connect can eat up your phone's battery. So try not to go too crazy on the settings. And you'll notice here under um, Run App, we've set it to run an app after the phone has been reconnected with the watch and that app is called BT Notification. This is the second app you need in order to send notifications from the phone to the watch. Here is the uh, main menu that you're going to see. Basically there are four screens. There's the second, third, and the fourth. So um, in the center you'll see that there's a clock. It's 4.30 approximately right now. I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to run very quickly through most of these little apps. So starting from the top um, is a Bluetooth icon. Clicking on that there are the settings for Bluetooth. Generally that will be for when you first connect your watch to the phone but after that it will remember there's a second uh, Bluetooth looking icon and it says my device and um, this is basically the the setting that actually searches for your phone. So my phone is the SGH uh, I717R and um, interestingly you can uh, disconnect it, service list, rename. I'm just going to show you service list. It shows you um, the profiles that the phone will, um, your phone will provide to the watch. Okay, so we're going to go back, we're going to go back. The SOS icon is used for changing the emergency SOS number. Uh, I recommend that you disable it by deleting the number uh, built in there. Feel free to reset it at any time in the future. The QR code at the bottom here will, once scanned, will take you to the website to download the companion app for the smartphone. Okay, I found that press and hold uh, will take you backwards through the UI. Okay, uh, at the bottom here at 6 o'clock is uh, phone contacts and it's loading and it's loaded the contacts from the phone. Oh, now it says failed but loading oh, and it's still working. So you have uh, options at the top and bottom. One is local and one is Bluetooth. Here Bluetooth has already been selected so these are the contacts that are uh, residing on the phone itself. Local would be and there's no, you see there's no contacts here. Local would be contacts that are stored directly on the watch at this point. I haven't done that and it seems rather complicated to do. So it's probably better to leave the contacts on the phone. Uh, call history is this corner. Um, you could say uh, dialed calls and it shows you a list of the people that you've called. Um, you also have uh, missed calls, received calls, oops, and dialed calls seems to work, it loads them up from the phone. Okay. Uh, next we have phone, and that basically is the dialer. Okay, let's give it a call. Bonjour. Give me a message and I will call you back as soon as possible. Okay, thanks very much. So I'm going to press the hang up button, and we've hung up. At the top uh, corner here, sort of at 11 o'clock, we've got the calendar. This seems to be totally useless in the sense that it does not connect to, uh, say, your Google Calendar or your Microsoft Calendar. It's not that useful. Okay, now we're going to swipe to the second screen. At 12 o'clock, uh, I think that's supposed to represent a set of headphones. The music player plays back music on the watch. It plays back the music that is stored on your mobile device. And the sound is pretty good. Ah! 
to the right of the music player is the calculator. Now we're we have one of many different clock looking icons at the three o'clock mark here. And when I press it, it has the world time on it. Uh, the second of our many clock logos is what seems to be the alarm clock in the bottom corner. And that is for setting alarm. At the very bottom is a little gear, which is settings. The settings are very limited. This predictably looks like a gallery thing. So we have thumbnails here of images taken from the watch camera, which is on the side. I'm going to click on one of them. Instead of showing me the picture, it says I could view it, rename it, or delete it. Let's say view. Uh, here it is. Let's look at image information. Um, and the resolution is 600, 640 by 480. This is another photo. We'll view it. Um, this is not very interesting. Okay, here we have the camera icon. Insufficient memory, isn't that great? I've taken two pictures. I'm going to have to go back and um, erase that photo. I'm going to go back, try the camera. Insufficient memory, who knows why. <clears throat> So now it's the sound recorder, so I'm actually going to record a bit of sound. Okay, options. A uh, new record or list. I'm going to say new record. So right now it's recording, and um, I'm not changing position very much, so I'm going to stop it and play it back. Press stop. It says saved. Uh, we'll go to options. Play. It's pretty loud. So I'm going to stop it and play it back, and we'll see if the sound set is different from what the camera here is capturing. So. The playback was very solid, quite loud. Recording was good. Okay, so that's the end of this palette. Okay, moving on to number three. Excuse me, we'll start at the top here with the wavy thing and a link. It's a very basic thing that asks you if you're using an Android phone or iPhone. Other choices. Oh, and I got a remote notification as I should from this device. I'm so happy. Um, oh, and then, oh, sorry. And I also have, I have two little notifiers here. Uh, at the top corner, top right corner position is the sedentary alarm or long sit alarm. I've set it for 30 minutes. I guess you get a ring type, ring and vibrate. Let's say ring and vibrate. I'm going to say confirm. And so I guess after 30 minutes it should produce an alarm of some kind. <laughs> Uh, at the 3 o'clock position is the remote camera phone thing. In the instructions it suggests that your camera be ready to go at least. I should be able to... Oh! Remote capture does indeed work. And I say capture here. Okay, so it seems to work. Um, just make sure that you're turned on your phone camera in advance. Bottom corner there, we see is, um, those diamond shapes. That is theme. Really quite cheesy. We're going to start with theme number one, and that is the theme, this black on... Uh, what you see is what you get as far as theme number one. Theme number two is, you know, cheesy. And let's go back to theme number three now, which is slightly less cheesy, but still kind of cheesy. At the six o'clock position, we have the heart rate monitor. Okay, now just keep holding it until it gives you a number. Oh, and there you go. That's your number. Okay. Um, at the sort of seven o'clock position, we have the moon with disease, which is... Uh, the sleep recording monitor. 
Uh, I haven't tried that. I'm going to assume it works. I'm not sure what kind of information it will give you. The pedometer is at nine o'clock here. So how many how many steps? Count. 30. 30 steps. And what does the watch say? It says 35 steps. Pretty close. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Pretty accurate. Okay, and here at the top we have find your anti-loss device. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate this because it requires Bluetooth 4 and this phone is a Bluetooth 3 device. Here is the fourth pallet. We'll start at the 12 o'clock position and that is the clock type. Oh, okay. It shows three themes. We have theme number one selected. I'm going to show you where that clock actually appears. So let's press the back button and we're back at the, you know, the circular menu-ish system. And if you were to press back again, it takes you to this very basic clock screen. It's actually four things, four items at the bottom. So pressing on the phone image takes you immediately to the dialer. Text speech bubble here brings you to messaging inbox and let's see what's gonna happen. This is showing me my most recent text messages as they've been pulled from the phone and this is way better than the experience on the K8 smartwatch or the uh, Samsung Galaxy Gear. Now I've shown how pressing the back button eventually brings you back to this display but pressing it once more brings you to the clock and so Ultimately, when you keep, this is like the most home of the home, you know, slash back actions. So there are three versions of clock you can have. This is version number one. To me, it's the best because it shows the uh, day of the week and a sweep second hand. At the one o'clock position is a, looks like a hand making a fist, like punching into the corner. Really, it's a, the switch enables the display to be turned on when you flip your wrist over. In general, it works pretty well. Then we have what looks like an SMS text bubble. And this is the SMS text messaging that I showed earlier. It's the same as the icon on. It's the same as this icon there. So the bottom corner here are the profiles, which we looked at before in a different context. Um, Let's say set for outdoor, customize, it's going to vibrate and ring, the ring type is going to repeat. This UI is horrible so I'm not going to struggle with it again so let's just go back. Uh, the bottom at 6 o'clock position is the I symbol which is information and that what you see is all the information you get. Okay now we have yet another clock type symbol in the bottom left corner. It is the time and date settings. Uh, it's, again, the UI could really be a bit easier to navigate, and I'm not going to deal with this now, but I was able to set this for the time, the correct time and date. At the 9 o'clock position, we have what looks like the Google Maps marker, and it is related to the GPS. Um, it's giving you three choices, location information off, or fuzzy location or precise positioning. When I press settings, um, it just shows some times reporting period. In the sort of 11 o'clock position, we have yet another clock, probably the last clock type thing in this UI. This is the stopwatch. Let's, it says prepared, so now it's running. Look at that. So folks, that wraps up the approximately 32 apps of the GT68 smartwatch. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot, and see you next time.